Y'all keep asking for this comparison. So here it is, the freaking Sony ZV-E1 versus the Lumix S9. Let's get it. What's up, y'all? It's Tyson Tier Tear Wolf, and I'm back for another video. Hope you're having a fantastic day so far. Remember to be thankful for your freaking life today because you ain't have to have that. I know the setup is looking a little different. We had to, you know, move. So uh, unfortunately, right now, I ain't nothing to set up. So it's just me, a couch, and a wall, and uh, some echo. So hope that's not a big deal. We'll add the sauce soon. Now, I personally don't think that these two cameras should be compared. You know, I use them both for different purposes. In my opinion, they're aimed at two totally different types of people, but since y'all insist, we're gonna go ahead and compare the two. So these are Sony and Lumix's small vlogger, you know, if you wanna call them that, full frame cameras. Okay, let's start with the Sony ZV-E1. This bad boy costs 2,200 bucks. It shares the same imaging chain out the freaking A7S III, FX3, and FX6. So it's got all those same benefits, plus Sony added in a whole bunch of vlog stuff, plus it's got AI and all this other stuff built into it. It's a fantastic little camera. This is a workhorse for me. The Lumix S9, on the other hand, just came out, and this one is $1,500. Again, full frame, 24 megapixel sensor, basically the same imaging chain out the S52X, which I'm filming the main shot on right now. But then Lumix added in a whole bunch of stuff when it comes to real time LUT, took out a whole bunch of stuff also, and some of those things are deal breakers for some people. So let's start with the first thing first, and that is build quality and the camera body. And the other thing I know y'all gonna ask, what are those caps on the front of them? These are Condor Blue Metal sensor caps. I will leave links in the description. I use these on all my freaking cameras. Anyways, as you see, the two cameras are very, very similar in freaking size. If I turn them on the side, You'll notice that the ZV-E1 is a little bit thicker. I'll tell you why in one second. But all around, they're two very, very small offerings. Now let's start with the freaking Sony ZV-E1 because this is a big deal. This has a grip on it, okay? The Lumix S9 does not have any grip whatsoever. So ergonomics right off the bat, the Sony ZV-E1 freaking wins because it's got something to hold on to. Now with the S9, you can get a little small rear grip. Uh, you'll have to purchase it separately, but Right out the box, the Sony ZV-E1 has the better grip, hands down. On the top, you'll find this three cardioid pattern vlog microphone. It's actually a really, really good microphone. It's freaking smart and it's directional so it can detect where the subjects are based off the face recognition and direct the microphone to wherever that person is. And it actually works and sounds really, really good. And you have a digital hot shoe on here which accommodates all of Sony's digital microphones and all the other good stuff. On the top, you have a photo, video, and SQ switch. You have your record button. You have a zoom rocker, so you can use this with Sony's power zoom lenses and control clear image zoom with it. And on the sides, you do have a micro HDMI port, a USB-C port that you can use for power delivery and also to use it as a webcam. You cannot do that on the S9. And you got a microphone jack and a headphone monitoring jack. Now, on the S9, the form factor is really, really similar. This one though has a mode dial on top. Instead of a photo, video, and S and Q switch, you do have some dials and stuff up here. You, what you will find, like I said, is there's no freaking grip on here. So good luck holding it unless you wanna buy that small rear grip. Now on the sides, you do get USB-C and micro HDMI just like you do on the ZV-E1, but you don't get any webcam ability with this S9, you have to use like the RTMP R2D2 freaking protocol, whatever it's freaking called. On the back, you got customizable buttons over here, just like you do with the ZV-E1. And you got the flippy screen, just like you do with the ZV-E1. And on the left-hand side, the only thing that's up here is a microphone input. Now, you don't get any headphone monitoring jack on the S9. So that's something that you need to be aware of. And the shoe on top is a cold shoe. so. No communications, no digital mics, which in my opinion is a huge freaking miss. Now I do wanna give a huge W to the S9 and the Sony ZV-E1 because both of them have full size batteries from their bigger brother. So neither company decided to put in these tiny freaking batteries. So that means you get great battery life out of both of them. And both of them don't have a mechanical shutter. It's not really a big deal on the ZV-E1 because it's not really meant for photos, but it's strange that the S9 doesn't have mechanical shutter because it is a hybrid camera, which we're gonna talk about that more. I mean, both are hybrid, but this is more of a hybrid camera. Overall, when it comes to the build quality, all the buttons and switches and everything that the cameras offer on the outside, I gotta get a W to the Sony ZV-E1. However, we do have to keep in mind that it costs 700 freaking dollars more, okay? So that's something that needs to be said throughout this video, there's a $700 freaking price difference between the two of them. 
The next thing I want to hone in on is the imaging chain, start with the Lumix S9. Now, this one steals everything from the Lumix S5 II and the S5-2X, so you still get the same 24 megapixel sensor, about 12 and a half stops to dynamic range, the same dual native ISO of 640 and 4000. You still get 24 megapixel steals, amazing low light performance, although you do get pretty poor roll and shutter performance out the sensor, but you do get up to 6K30 freaking open gate in 10 bit which is a huge deal you also get a mp4 light option and 4k 30 open gate for quick sharing back and forth with the lumix lab app we'll talk about that in a second also lumix didn't take freaking anything out when it comes to monitoring tools so you still get shutter angle and vector scopes and waveforms and anamorphic d squeeze and all of that stuff is still built into the camera but the one thing that holds it back is freaking record limits so in 6k that means you only get 10 minutes at a time 4k 15 minutes 1080p 20 minutes and i think lumix did that to avoid overheating but it is what it is and it's actually a great photography camera also you can shoot up to 30 fps burst although no mechanical shutter and you do get this 65 by 24 x pan mode that you get with the lumix s52 and i will tell you that this is one of the funnest things when it comes to photography especially combining it with the real-time LUT that the s9 offers we'll talk about that in a second so that's the lumix s9 sony zv e1 has a totally different image and change so this is the 12 megapixel sensor as we already said out the fx3 a7s3 and fx6 it is super crazy and low light okay dual base iso or dual native iso of 640 and 12,800, which i use all the freaking time it's got more dynamic range probably about a stop more than the lumix s9 it's got amazing rolling shutter performance because it doesn't have to oversample or downsample whatever you want to call it so the rolling shutter performance on the zve1 is freaking fantastic and on top of that there is no freaking crop when you are using 4k 60 and there's only a 1.1 times crop in 4k 120 and you still get 10 bit and all of that stuff in all of those modes which is wild now you can take photos on the zve1 again it does have a mechanical shutter and the photos are fine they come out vibrant full of you know dynamic range and all that stuff but remember it's only 12 megapixels so the nod definitely goes to the s9 when it comes to photography but overall it's kind of hard to say which one is better, right? The 6K30 in here, the Cinema 4K, all the vector scopes and waveforms are amazing on the S9, but you got to deal with poor rolling shutter performance and a 4K 61 and a half times crop, whereas the ZV-E1 is lower megapixels. You get much faster readouts. You get pretty much no crops when it comes to all of your files and formats, but it doesn't shoot up to 6K. It only does 4k but it does give you up to 4k 120 now both of them can shoot higher frame rates we switch over to 1080p but this one is kind of a toss-up you got to pick which one will work better for you for me i prefer probably the zve1 because i shoot so much slow-mo and i hate dealing with freaking crops but i'm not saying that the s9 is bad in that regard because 6k 30 is a big deal especially at open gate for content creators i use it also a lot so <laughs> this one is a toss-up i'll leave this one up to y'all now when it comes to actual image quality the s9 is a tad bit sharper okay because it'd be oversampled off of a 6k sensor but to be honest you ain't really going to be able to tell a difference unless you're a freaking pixel piece Keeping, and that's just keeping it 100 all right both cameras matter of fact all cameras these days have amazing image quality if you can't get good quality out of either one of these i'm sorry you just freaking suck but again the zve one does have slightly more dynamic range also you get vlog and you get s log 3 personally i prefer the colors out the lumix but that's subjective but this one's really a toss-up also if you want a slightly sharper image go with the s9 if you want a slightly softer image Go with the ZVE1. Now, I do want to talk about system perks because this is a big freaking deal. I'm going to start with the Sony ZVE1. Okay, these are things that you need to understand before you go making the decision. So, the Sony ZVE1, first of all, has the digital hot shoe. That means that you can use Sony's digital microphones, which are, they're so freaking good, yo. You can use that. It's got the built in microphones on top so you don't need to worry about oh my god i forgot a microphone no the built-in microphones are crazy you also get access to sony's ridiculously huge lineup of native lenses and third-party lenses plus the zve1 since it's a vlog camera it has all the vlog stuff built into it not that i use it but some of it is actually useful so you got stuff like product showcase mode you got background defocus modes you got cinematic mode 
soft scan mode, and all of them freaking things in there. The biggest thing about the ZV-E1 though is it has an AI chip in it. So the AI aids with so many things. First of all, autofocus. The autofocus of the ZV-E1 blows the S9 out the water. Now, the autofocus in the S9 is the best that Lumix has offered. It is good, it works fine but it can't compete with the ZV-E1. The ZV-E1 can do human pose estimation so it can track you with your freaking back turned. It can estimate where your head is gonna be based off of where your neck is and if you got a helmet, it knows where your eyes are gonna be. It can track planes, trains, freaking automobiles, aliens, all that good stuff, whereas the S9 just cannot compete. But it also gives you some extra stuff. So it's got stuff like frame and stabilizer built into it. It's got stuff like uh, auto frame and where it will actually follow you around the frame and punch in and crop in during recording, which is, is just crazy. The AI chip in the ZV-E1 is really a big deal. Now, the Lumix S9 also has some tricks up its sleeve. Now, this is weird, okay? Because Lumix took out so much out of this camera, but they did give it something that's almost good enough to trump out everything that they took out, right? And that is real time luck. It's just crazy, okay? The Lumix S9, can put 39 freaking LUTs in there, okay? You can add LUTs to the Sony ZV-E1, but only for video. The Lumix S9 allows you to put the LUTs on photos and videos. Now, again, 39 of them, yo, and these 39 LUTs can be hot swapped at any time. So this pairs with the Lumix Lab app on your phone. It allows for pretty much instantaneous transfers automatic downloads if you want to turn that on, but there's a whole ecosystem for LUTs. So not only can you create new LUTs right from the Lumix Lab app, you can customize the LUTs right from the Lumix Lab app. You can export them and share them with other people on the Lumix Lab app. And there's a whole creator tab that allows you to download LUTs from your favorite creators and import those and send them straight to the camera in real time. I cannot tell you how much fun this is, being able to customize stuff on the camera, take it even further with the phone, because you do need the phone to really do all the customization of the LUTs, and then just freaking export them and share them, and if you don't like those, you can import 39 new ones at any time and apply those to photos and videos. This is a system-defining feature that the Lumix S9 has. So it's one of the things where although it doesn't have all the snazzy stuff that the ZV-E1 has, it's almost good enough to freaking trump everything else that Lumix took out of it. On top of that, this one does have live crop, which can kind of show you on the screen if you want to set it to do like a pan or something like that. It has a mode where you can customize like autofocus pools in there, which is super dope. I haven't seen that on any other camera in this price range that has a full frame. So that's crazy. All in all, both of them do have really, really defining system advantages. And this one's really up to you, yo. The real-time LUT thing is wild. Being able to have 6K30 open gate and a camera this small is wild. That supports anamorphic and all that stuff is crazy. The stuff that the ZV-E1 also offers is wild. I can't say which one is better. I gotta say, you gotta pick the one that has the better advantages for you because we ain't the same people. Now, I did talk about stabilization. The Lumix S9 has fantastic stabilization, okay? It's got different levels. It's got boost, okay? So boost is like a tripod locked off mode where you can literally hand hold the camera and it looks like it's on a tripod. It's got anamorphic stabilization built into it. But to be honest, with wider lenses, it does have some pretty pronounced wobble in the corners, which for vlogging is a big deal. Other than that though, in my opinion, Lumix has the best stabilization out of any cameras. Now, the ZV-E1 also has regular stabilization, active stabilization, and it does have a mode called dynamic, but dynamic costs you a 30% crop. And to be honest, even with the Sony ZV-E1's dynamic stabilization with that 30% crop, I'm still giving a nod to the S9 because the S9 without the 30% crop can match the dynamic level of stabilization from the Sony ZV-E1. The only thing that the ZV-E1 has over it is that it does give you gyro data. So if you wanted to stabilize it in post and do motion effects and stuff like that, you do have the gyro data out of the Sony ZV-E1. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is zoom features on both of them. Now, the Sony ZV-E1 can do clear image zoom in 4K up to one and a half times. And it does like this wizardry with the zoom that will allow you to get extra reach out of the lenses. What I love about the ZV-E1 is unlike some of Sony's other cameras, when you use clear image zoom, you don't lose access to face tracking, auto tracking, and all that other good stuff with the ZV-E1, but it only goes up to one and a half times. Well, the S9 now has something called hybrid zoom, okay? When you put on a freaking zoom lens on an S9, because it's coming off of a 6K sensor, 
it can turn like the kit 20 to 60 into like a 20 to freaking 93 millimeter if you're filming in 4k if you switch it over to 1080p it can go from like 20 to like 200 something like it's, it's honestly pretty freaking wild so the zoom absolutely goes to the lumix s9 when it comes to giving your lenses more reach because it could do more because it's got more sensor pixels to work with now when it comes to overheating and battery both of these bad boys overheat i've had them both overheat on me several times okay but again the lumix s9 has freaking record limits and that's something that you have to be mindful of the zve one doesn't have record limits so it'll run until it shuts off from heat or until the battery dies, but the Lumix, every time it stops, you gotta restart it. Both of them have a whole bunch of processing power going on inside of these super small bodies with no fans, no exhaust port. Overheating will happen on longer form content on both cameras. Battery life, as I said on both, is pretty freaking amazing. I haven't really noticed a difference. Um, so I'm just gonna leave it there when it comes to overheating and battery life. Now, I do wanna talk about the webcam because that's a big deal. The ZV-E1, as I said earlier in the video, has that USB streaming protocol in it which is so good all you got to do is freaking plug up a usb-c cable into any device and it pops up as a freaking webcam which is amazing it will also let you record at the same time that you're streaming and since we're on the subject we might as well talk about some tidbits the zve1 does have a built-in time lapse option which is pretty dope it will actually create the time lapse in the camera for you you can even do it in s-log 3 and it'll spit out the time lapse for you already created you ain't got to deal with stitching them together in lightroom and all that other crap and i already told you about some of the things s9 does such as live cropping being able to set the end point and out point for autofocus racks is really really dope all in all I know I forgot some stuff, right? I didn't script this freaking video. I'm just kind of letting it rip. I did take notes though. I would say the Sony ZV-E1 is more of a workhorse camera and not so much a fun camera. I'm not saying it can't be fun, but when I use these cameras, the ZV-E1, unless I'm doing professional work, which I don't do that much often, and usually on those times I either go written something or I'm using one of my bigger cameras, but the ZV-E1 is more of a workhorse camera, although it is targeted towards vloggers and content creators. I use it mainly for my run and gun YouTube stuff. And, and again, this thing is $2,200. So we got to throw that out there because we about to bring it around full circle. The S9 on the other hand, although it's very capable in a lot of ways, there's no other camera at the freaking price point with a full frame that can shoot 6K30 open gate, that allows you to shoot anamorphic, that has amazing stabilization, that gives you something like real time luck, which is again, is a system freaking defining option but it just takes out so many things that are also super important. It doesn't have a freaking hot shoe on it. It doesn't have a headphone monitor import. There's no mechanical shutter on something that's meant to be a hybrid photo and video camera. That's not the biggest deal with the ZV-E1 because it's only really supposed to be a video camera. Well, this one is marketed as a hybrid camera, especially being able to use real-time LUT combined with the X-Pan mode on there. So it's very strange that they would take out the mechanical shutter, I know data says that all the vloggers and stuff don't care about it, but I would have loved a mechanical shutter and the EVF on the S9. Not so much on the ZV-E1 because again, and I'm not giving it a pass because it should have one also, but I'm willing to excuse it on ZV-E1 because it's not a hybrid camera like the Lumix S9 is. This is such a powerful camera, but it's met with a limitation at the end of every row. 6K30, but it's freaking record limits on it and all of them things. But again, we gotta be mindful of price point. 1500 bucks versus $2,200. You have to figure out which one of these is better suited for you, what feature set is the best for you, and ultimately, what's in your freaking budget. I use both of these cameras. And I get I'm fortunate enough to be able to do that, and I get not everybody's that fortunate, and I hope that you are one day. But for me, these are two totally different cameras. It really just depends on which one floats your boat more. If you like this video, make sure you hit subscribe. I'll be looking in the analytics, and most of y'all don't be subscribing, but y'all be coming back watching the videos. Hit the subscribe button if you liked it, and let me know which camera you prefer down in the comment section. I promise y'all on the next video, we'll have more sauce than this. And until next time, I'm out of here. Tyson Terry Warfield. Peace and chicken grease. I'm out, y'all. Much love. Peace.